Right troops, it's Chris Scullion here from tiredoldhack.com and this is my commentary track for the Sega Mega CD promotional video uh, that was given away with the first ever issue of Mean Machine Sega way back in October 1992. So, how even, how old is that, 24 years ago? Yep, yeah, it's a 24 year old video you're now watching, exciting times. Yeah. So for those watching from the US uh, who didn't already know this, the Mega CD is essentially the British, well, the European and Japanese name for the Sega CD. Uh, so essentially you guys named it wrong, not us. Uh, likewise, the what you know as the Genesis was actually the Mega Drive in Europe and Japan. So yeah, again, Sega CD and Genesis were the kind of North American only names. Uh, whereas Mega Drive and Mega CD were the kind of names in, elsewhere in the world, let's say. Never really understood what this wee video, <laughs> this thing was. I get the feeling that it was a separate thing put together to promote the Mega Drive back in the day, um, and was just kind of stuck on at the start of the Mega CD video just for shits and giggles because, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting one. It doesn't really have anything to do with the Mega CD. <laughs> But naturally, it started with um, this kind of montage showing what the Mega Drive can already do. So you obviously got stuff like Sonic 2 and uh, European Club Soccer, Moonwalker, Road Rash. I can just go through naming them all, but that would just be really massively boring for everyone. Uh, PGA Golf and the likes. Um, I can give a name in, if, in YouTube if anyone is really desperate for a list of all the games shown there, but it's pretty easy enough to figure most of them out. There's a couple of kind of obscure ones, uh, not so much John Madden, but stuff like that, Alicia Dragoon and stuff like that, which kind of been forgotten over time. But yeah, it's, just, it's, it's kind of it's montage just to show off what the Mega Drive is, is currently capable of, but obviously the twist coming, folks, is that, yeah, Mega Drive's all well and good, but what will really pump your nads is the introduction of CD-ROM technology, which was a big deal at the time. So where do you go from here? What's the next level She's probably about 80 now. What are you going to do with all that imagination of yours? Well, the journey starts here. This little baby is only the tip of the iceberg. Soon the story continues with the arrival of the Sega Mega CD. There we go. The CD-ROMs were a massive deal at the time because cartridges could only still hold um, a, a, a tiny amount, like comparatively like, but by modern standards. Um, I remember them making a big deal out of Super Street Fighter 2 on the Mega Drive because it had a 40 bit, a 40 megabit cartridge and that's megabit, so that's only 5 megabytes. Um, so yeah, and really not a lot at all. Then out come CDs, pardon me, then out come CDs which at the time could hold like 600, 650 megs. Um, obviously later on you got CDs that could hold like 700 and, and plus, uh, but at the time obviously 600 meg was a ridiculous amount. Um, so here we go. A wee bit of music, a wee bit of Joe Satriani music to uh, conveniently make this uh, copyright, infringement, uh, copyright infringing video and one that will make me no advertising money from it. Thanks Joe. This is Sewer Shark, this is one of the games from Digital Pictures who were kind of best known for Night Trap, uh, but they did Sewer Shark and a few other kind of uh, full motion video games. And this was kind of one of the big issues with the Mega CD and other kind of full motion uh, video consoles at the time, like the 3DO and the CDI, that any of the games that kind of focused on movie uh, footage rather than game generated images. Uh, like sprites and kind of early polygons were kind of seriously hampered because there wasn't a lot of interactivity there. You can see all, all that there, that is basically is you've got a cursor on the screen and enemies appear and you've got to shoot them. It is literally a, a light gun game uh, with kind of grainy footage <laughs> behind it. The Batman Returns is one of the kind of big games that were trumpeting early on that, that was quickly forgotten about, it, mostly because it could do this kind of cool racing scene which you couldn't do in the Mega Drive version of the game. But by and large the rest of it was kind of similar, it was just mostly focused on, on these uh, driving sections. Which was quite cool, it was 
it looked better than Mode 7, which is what the SNES could do at the time and was the big kind of selling point of the SNES over the Mega Drive that it could do this kind of Mode 7 sprite scale and stuff uh, that made racing games always better on the SNES, but then suddenly this Batman Returns and Mega CD could do it as well, so that was quite cool. This is Make My Video. They did a crisscross one and I believe they did an NXS one and a CNC Music Factory one, but I might be wrong about the NXS one, I need to look it up. Uh, Certainly there was a CNC Music Factory one and a crisscross one where basically you got the music video, the official music video for the songs and then a bunch of weird shitty stock footage, it was obviously copyright free footage and you just pressed A, B or C to kind of jump between the three video feeds to make your own music video and people would phone up with requests saying I want a video with footage of cars in it and you'd say right so you'd make sure all the clips with cars in them would be chosen so massively exciting. Um, it wasn't, it was shite. Even back then people realised it was shite. And here it is. The greatest video game ever made, Night Trap. Listen up. Oh, there she is, Dana Plato. Star of different strokes and then died of a drugs overdose. Uh, not related to Night Trap, I should add. That game is uh, got a flawless record. Um, you're not going to get it. Uh, guilty for anything, uh, despite the congressional hearing, which decided it was one of the games that was uh, massively um, influential in damaging the minds of young children who played video games, and ultimately led to uh, led to the ESRB rating that America uses, which in turn led to the Peggy rating in, in Britain. So every time you see Peggy 12 before trailers, you can kind of blame Night Trap. It's got part of partly responsible. Yeah, this one's Cobra Command. It's another one of those kind of full motion video ones. There was there was two like this at the start of the Mega CDs launch. There was Cobra Command and there was uh, Road Avenger. I had another name elsewhere, um, which slips my mind at the moment. It was something like Road Enforcer or something like that. But Road Avenger it was called in Britain, and it was similar. It was a kind of anime style sequences that again you just moved a target over. Pretty limited interactivity. So yeah, there you go. Ready for mega CD playability. You can chill out to your own music. We Smash Brothers logo there, I'm sure that wasn't intentional. <laughs> it didn't do that either, it didn't make you disappear, which is slightly disappointing. So yeah, that is the promo itself. That's usually where it ends, but obviously make uh, Mean Machine Sega had other ideas, so they decided to add extra stuff like this bizarre football competition. Uh where Essentially, you're asked what happened next. Um, but you're showing a couple of examples first, just in case you don't, you can't, your puny child brain can't comprehend the idea of guessing what happened next. Oh, you bastard! So yeah, that's what happened next. Referee died and his family were left widowed. There's a famous uh, clip featuring a player called Peter Devine. Um, the only reason I know that is because it was in a Nick Hancock Football Nightmares video as well in which he said his name about 12 times. So yeah, remember the name, Peter Devine. I certainly did remember that name. The man himself. And then some more shit, I don't know. Odd, they've added really odd kind of <laughs> Sega sound effects to it as well, which is a bit confusing. And now here's the actual competition, uh, which even um, 24 years later has me stressed because I still don't know what the answer is. I, I, to this day, I don't know what happened next because. Um, I entered the competition and said that she fell on her arse, but there's no way of telling really because, to the best of my knowledge, there was never the the answer was never given uh, that I could see at least. Maybe I just totally missed it, but yeah. If anyone out there knows what happened next in that clip, please tell me and solve it. What is for me a 24 year mystery? European club soccer was shite, uh, so that wasn't a big a big loss. Now. At the end, they put they put together this preview video as if it was a separate tape, 
Hence, welcome to this preview video. But they only kind of show five games, and then obviously decided, fuck it, that'll do. Um, so the first is one of the finest games ever made, um, and certainly one of the three best Mega Drive games, I'd say, is Streets of Rage 2. If you're American watching this, or if you're one of these modern kids who played only ever played Streets of Rage 2 on an emulator or one of the um, kind of redone Xbox or uh, PlayStation HD remakes of it. When you're watching this particular clip, you'll notice the music's really slow and you'll be thinking, what the fuck is going on here? As you can hear. Essentially, the deal is this is what all games were like <laughs> um, in Britain. Almost all games. Um, for the longest time, because PAL ran at 50 hertz and NTSC, which was American, basically PAL was the British video standards before there was a kind of agreed. Before we started getting HD and stuff, and everything was done by pixels instead, like 720p, 1080p, and now 2160p for 4K. Before then, it was by it went by lines, and uh, PAL, which was the British standard, and Australian went by was 50 hertz. Uh, speed and NTSC, which was the Americans' uh, standard, ran at 60 hertz. So that essentially meant that um, Brit all British games, unless they were kind of basically reprogrammed and recoded, British games had a slightly sharper resolution because they had more lines on the screen uh, than the American TV standard, but the games ran significantly slower. Uh, so yeah, if, if you watch clips from Streets of Rage 2 nowadays, uh, basically taken on anything other than a British Mega Drive, original Mega Drive, uh, the games will be normal speed, essentially it was normal speed. We all we had to play all our games in slow motion essentially, uh, which meant the music sounded slower, the game played slower. Sonic, we were still blown away by how fast Sonic the Hedgehog was, but he was actually running something like 18% slower or whatever it is, whatever the calculation is. Uh, that Americans were getting it, so despite the Sun and other newspapers coming out with um, news stories about how Sonic the Hedgehog was causing epileptic fits in British children, um, it could have actually been much worse uh, because America were getting an even harder time of it because uh, it was much faster. So there you go. Uh, Streets of Rage 2 is. I'll, I'll do, I'm going to go do a separate thing about the Streets of Rage series at some point in the future, but. On titled hype both in video and written form, but um, if you've never played Streets of Rage 2, you're really missing out. It's a genre that's kind of almost on its arse these days. There's a few exceptions like the Scott Pilgrim game and Castle Crashers, but other than that, um, kind of scrolling beat em ups of the style of Streets of Rage and Final Fight are few and far between uh, good ones. Uh, so, this is very much a a gem. It, it, can, it can still be got, you can get it on both PlayStation and Xbox digital stores and I believe the Xbox 360 version uh, which is the Xbox 360 Live Arcade one had Streets of Rage 1, 2 and 3 all on it um, and I believe is now backwards compatible on Xbox One so if you've only got an Xbox One you can get it um, I think PlayStation 3, I'm not sure about PlayStation 4, I'd need to check certainly PS3, uh, PlayStation Store you can get it on that as well as part of a kind of Sega Classics Collection thing. Fantastic game. Some of the best music you'll ever hear in a game. Um, yeah, kind of beat it. So yeah. It's one of these ones where they play more footage than is comfortable for me to talk about. Um, because obviously when they recorded this footage um, 24 years ago, they didn't expect it two and a half decades later some prick was going to talk over it and try and get a commentary going um, on YouTube because they didn't even know what YouTube was. Windows 95 was still three years away, fuck. <laughs> right, here's X Mutants, which was immediately forgotten. Um, yeah, Mega Drive interpretation of the popular uh, series of comics. That was one of these... Um, classic situations where I'm presuming, I mean obviously I wasn't at Mean Machine Sega in 1992, I was only nine years old, uh, so I don't think employment laws would have allowed it, but I guess one of those situations where a press release or a PR um, tells them it's based on a popular comic series and they just accept it. 
pretty sure X Mutants was not a popular comic series. It was it was a it was a genuine comic series. Um, it was bought over by Malibu Comics, who did like a kind of Street Fighter comic series for a while. Um, but by all accounts, it was average at best and really wasn't that popular. Uh, it was a pretty bad X Men ripoff, basically. It was about a school with a professor uh, looking after people with mutant powers. So yeah. Here it is, Echo the Dolphin, the majesty of Echo the Dolphin. Um, bold of Mean Machine Sega to call it the game of the year. I was never a massive fan of Echo the Dolphin to be honest, but I appreciate I'm in a minority. It looked incredible. Um, let's be clear there, it's, it's, it was an amazing looking game. Sounded interesting, had a nice kind of chillaxing soundtrack. This is the last time I, first and last time I used the word chillax. Um, and yeah, you could always, once you learned how to perfect that kind of jump where you flipped like that, uh, you felt cool as fuck, but after that you realise this is actually a kind of, it's a pretty difficult, pretty bland maze type game with puzzles in it, which always just annoyed me. Um, but having said that, I was like 9 or 10 at the time when it came out, so uh, maybe that's why I was irked by it, although whoever's playing this for this video is obviously having problems with it too. So yeah, that's Echo. Um, I give a bit. Of, this bit goes on for a while, so I give a bit of history on Mean Machines uh, Sega itself. Um, interestingly, it's kind of almost part of my lineage as well because I ended up working on its descendants. Um, essentially, Mean Machines actually started as the console section of CVG, which is Computer and Video Games Magazine. Um, Back in October 1987, CVG started doing like a separate section called Mean Machines, um, and it was like basically computer and video games. When it started, it was mostly about um, Spectrum, Commodore, Atari, uh, all those kind of like home computers, basically. Um, and then when the NES and Sega Master System came out, and they had to start kind of dealing with consoles as well, and obviously the Atari 2600 to an extent. Um, I mean, uh, CVG had to kind of deal with console games, so eventually they started Mean Machines, which was a separate section in CVG dedicated just to consoles, um, and that was to kind of separate the console section from the rest of the magazine, which was still focused on computers. Uh, but that section became so popular, and it became clear that cons as consoles were getting more and more popular, that they decided to split uh, Mean Machines from CVG and make it its own separate magazine, so Mean Machines... Issue 1 launched in October 1990 um, and focused exclusively on basically, alright mate, kill it with a fucking sonar, uh, exclusively on Nintendo, Sega and kind of Atari systems at the time. So yeah, that was Mean Machines and it was like one of the finest games magazines ever made, some of the writer, like Julian Rigno is like a, a legendary writer. Um, Oh, here's a little mermaid. Fun times. Uh, actually, I rented this out and finished it in a day. It was really easy, but it was good. It was good. It was adequate. Um, so yeah, Mean Machines was going for like two years, um, and after those two years, it became clear that kind of the both magazines were ma well. That that magazine was massively popular, but they decided to split it in two because um, as as fantastic as Mean Machines was, it was getting pretty clear that there was a split between. Sega fans and Nintendo fans, and fans of who owned either the Mega Drive or a Super Nintendo, uh, were buying. Well, although the SNES wasn't out at that time, but um, were buying the magazine and only really getting kind of about half of the magazine because the rest was for a system they didn't own. So ultimately, Mean Machines was split into two magazines: Mean Machines Sega, uh, which is who released this video. A Nintendo Magazine System, or NMS as it was known, and that was the first, Nintendo Magazine System was the first official Nintendo magazine uh, available on shops in the UK, which obviously then evolved into Nintendo, the official magazine, which then became official Nintendo Magazine, which I joined uh, in 2006. So this is, in a way, um, commenting on a video that decades later um, would be kind of related to my career in some way because this is from Mean Machines which became 
Nintendo magazine system, which became official Nintendo magazine, and which came from CVG, where I ended up. So yeah, it's a bit of a convoluted family tree there, but yeah, there you have it. But this is Tailspin, um, which was a kind of Disney TV series based on Baloo the Bear from the Jungle Book, uh, suddenly taking on a fucking weird delivery, plane delivery service for some reason. I hated Tailspin, hated the game, but yeah, there you have it. So yeah, that was the Mega CD uh, promo video that came in Mean Machine Sega issue 1 way back in October 1992. Hope you enjoyed it, do all the like and subscribing shit that you're supposed to do on YouTube. Um, and visit tiredoldhack.com for more uh, of this similar ilk. Cheers!